Dear students, welcome you all. In the last class, we have discussed in detail about the humidity measurement, measurement of humidity by using uh, different hygrometers and also we have discussed about various factors, various factors that affects the moisture regain of textile fibers, the moisture regain of textile fibers. So, we have seen uh, the factors like, we have seen the factors like relative humidity, temperature, time and then previous history of the sample. Okay. So, and also we have discussed about the effect of moisture on fiber properties, effect of moisture on fiber property. That means after absorbing the moisture, so what are the different properties that are going to affect the fibers, that is fiber properties that are going to affect after absorbing the moisture. So, we have seen the properties related to dimensions. What is that we have discussed? So, in case of fiber dimensions, if, if a fiber absorbs a moisture where the fiber swells, so it results in shrinkage of the fiber, shrinkage of the fabrics, understand? So, that is the effect and also whatever the penetration of water molecules, whatever the penetration of water molecules which is taken place in the amorphous region of the textile that is internal structure of the fiber. We have crystalline region and we have amorphous region. So, in the amorphous region only maximum absorption is taking place, understand? And the next we have discussed about this mechanical properties that means how the mechanical properties that are going to affect after absorbing the moisture that is of textile fibers. So, how it is going to affect? So, depending upon the nature of fibers. So, we have the fibers like regenerated fibers and we have the fibers like natural fibers. So, when it comes to the natural fibers, for example, cotton if you take, after absorbing the moisture where the strength of cotton fiber is going to enhance. That is the reason why in the spinning that is ring spinning where in that areas they are maintaining a humidity of 65 percentage and also we are maintaining the same level of humidity even in cotton weaving also. Why? Because by making use of these mechanical properties of fibers after absorbing the moisture. But this case is not same for all the fibers. That means in case of cotton and flax after absorbing the moisture where the strength is going to increase. Whereas in case of viscose rayon where we cannot expect the same sort of phenomenon like the strength is going to decrease. Understand? So, this is what we have seen and we have discussed about the electrical properties as well as thermal properties. Like after absorbing the moisture, the resistivity of fiber is going to reduce. And in case of thermal properties, after absorbing the moisture where the fiber, it releases some amount of heat. It releases some amount of heat. So, that heat is called as heat of absorption. And in the last class, I have given you some example also. Suppose if you wear a woolen garment or woolen sweater of up around 1 kg weight and if you step out into an atmosphere where the relative humidity is of 65 and then at a temperature of 5 degrees where you know how much amount of uh, that is calories per gram that is that energy is going to release that is heat is going to release it is about 1 lakh it is about 1 lakh so which is equivalent to the human so which it takes near about 1 hour to release that much amount of heat understand so that is the thermal properties understand so this is all about the last class we have discussed in detail understand so right from humidity measurement and then this factors affecting regain and then effect of uh, moisture on fiber properties okay so this is all about the previous class okay so today's class we are going to discuss about so one of the important fiber dimensions that is length that is fiber length so in this uh, today's presentation 
we are going to discuss in detail about how to measure the fiber length and before that we are going to discuss about what is the fiber length and what is the importance of measuring the fiber length and how it will influences the yarn properties and thereby the fabric properties and what are the different methods that are available to measure the single fiber length and our concentration is mainly on the comb sorter method and then that is beer sorter method and then this uh, hygro that is fibro graph understand so let us go into the presentation so the contents of the today's presentation is presentation are the fiber length measurement where we are going to discuss about fiber sorter methods and then analysis of sorter diagrams that is after after finding out the that is after making the sorter diagrams we have to analyze the sorter diagrams for different parameters related to length measurement and then the concept of span length and then fibrograph fibrograph and finally uniformity index uniformity index so so these are the contents which we are going to discuss in today's presentation okay so now let us move on to this introduction part so here we are going to discuss about so what is this fiber length and its importance and how it is influencing the other fiber parameters okay now so after the fineness like fiber fineness is also one of the important fiber parameter which we are going to discuss after this okay so both fiber fineness and fiber length these are the important properties of a textile fiber so which needs to be measured before start doing the yarn manufacturing process before start doing the yarn manufacturing if you don't know your fiber length if you don't know your fiber fineness so you cannot make the right parameters or right settings in the spinning so if you don't have the right parameters and right setting obviously you cannot produce right quality of output that is yarn understand so in general in general if you take a longer average fiber length is to be preferred because it confirms number of advantages so generally if you are going for making yarn so a longer average fiber length is very much preferred so which confirms to confers to number of advantages and we will see what are those advantages so firstly longer fibers are easier to process so if the fibers in the bale are longer so where it is easy to process it is easy to process in the spinning understand and then secondly more even yarns can be produced that means if the length of fiber is long alt i mean obviously we will get more evenness in the yarn we will get less imperfections in the yarn okay so that is because of less fiber ends in a given length of yarn less fiber ends in a given length of yarn okay now and finally higher strength higher strength if the fibers are longer obviously the yarn which we are making out of that fiber is going to be strong why because there are more number of contact points between one fiber to another fibers so obviously if you want to break that fiber so it needs lot of strength understand so alternatively alternatively a yarn of same strength can be produced but with a low level of twist thus giving a softer yarns okay so this means that so whatever the higher strength we are producing in the yarn that can be produced okay so for the same level of twist we can maintain the same level of twist if we use higher that is long length of fibers we can get the same same level of strength where if we have used short fibers with same amount of twist 
we have short fibers and we have long fibers we are maintaining say for example 20 twist per inch and here also 20 twist per inch both twist per inch are same but here longer longer fibers and here shorter fibers so in case of longer fibers also if you maintain same twist levels where you can produce the higher strength of yarn compared to the yarn made out of shorter fibers that is because of so more number of contact points between fiber to fiber okay so when it comes to this measurement of natural fiber measurement of natural fibers is a task and there is a greater variation in the length of different types of different types of same material even within the same type even within the same type that means what there are lot of chances of getting variation in the length of fibers even in the different types of same material and even within the same material that means suppose if you are getting the cotton from in the near, in and around guntur regions and if you are getting cotton from telangana region okay that is different varieties of cotton obviously there will be some changes in the length of fiber and even though you are getting the same cotton from the guntur region you cannot say that or you cannot assure that same length will be there there are great variation in the fiber length okay, great variation in the fiber length okay so if you look at the properties of cotton fiber if you look at the properties of cotton fiber it varies for different varieties of cotton it varies for different varieties of cotton different growth rates and for different climatic conditions different climatic conditions and from year to year so these are all some of the reasons where the property of cotton is vary within the same material or within the that is within the material we are getting from the same region or from the different regions okay so this is it now when it comes to when it comes to measurement part when it comes to measurement part so till now we have discussed what is this fiber length and uh, in what way the fiber length influences the yarn properties and we have seen what are the i mean various reasons for variations in the fiber length okay moving on to now we will discuss about so how to measure the fiber length how to measure the fiber length so as i told you already measurement of fiber length is very very important so which will give us an idea about the characteristics of fiber which we are having and how to set the mission settings in the spinning line so for that we need to we need to measure the fiber length along with all other that is other factors like fiber fineness fiber maturity and fiber strength okay so now we will discuss about how to measure the fiber length okay so generally whatever the bale of cottons we are getting so we have to take a representative sample that means so from all the samples like we have to take the samples randomly so so that the whatever the samples we are collecting that should represent the entire quality of the bulk okay and then individual fiber length is measured individual fiber length is measured okay and these values are arranged accordingly and the mean and coefficient of variations are calculated mean and coefficients of variations are calculated and this method is used mainly for the man made staple fibers as the variation in the length is not too much variation in the fiber length is not too much and the fibers are straightened and placed on an oil plate and the individual length of fibers can be measured okay so after taking all the fibers representative fiber we have to straighten all the fibers by using a comb and then we have to place in a oil plate and individual length of fibers is measured this we have to place around 300 to 500 fibers and individual fiber length is measured and after getting all the values individual fiber length then we are going to take the mean and coefficient of variation okay so this is and so this is a process of 
measuring the fiber length that is individual fiber length especially in case of man-made staple fibers okay so in the process of measuring uh, the fiber length that is individual fiber length where we have so many methods are available so many methods are available to measure the individual fiber length the first one is hand staple method the first one is hand stapling method and is is very i'd say it's a manual kind of thing where we have to the person has to uh, take out the representative sample and manually he has to uh, that is comb the fibers and then he has to check it so it is a tedious process and it is purely based on uh, that is judgment of individuals and comb sorter method comb sorter methods and the single fiber length measurement length measurement by weighing method so here in two cases we are taking bunch of fibers we are taking bunch of fibers and we are measuring the fiber length related parameters like mean length effective length like that okay here single fiber uh, length measurement and then length measurement by weighing method and clamp theft method and thickness gauging method and then shirley photoelectric stapler and finally photoelectric method which is fibrograph which is an automatic that is it is an automatic uh, way of finding out the fiber length so which is widely used even in high volume instruments also we have a fibrograph will be there okay so which will give us the length related parameters of the fabric that is it will give us in the form of span length like what is the 2.5 percent span length and what is 50 percent span length thereby we can get the uniformity ratios okay so so these are all the various methods which are used to find out or measure the fiber length so out of all these methods we are going to concentrate mainly on this comb sorter method and then photoelectric method photoelectric method okay now so before going to that comb sorter and photoelectric so I'll give you some brief about this hand stapling method. So which is uh, a conventional way or it's a manual kind of thing to measure the fiber length. Okay. So first we have to select a sample. Sample selection is nothing but already in the first unit you have studied that is sampling process. So the sampling should be always random and it should cover the entire portions of the uh, bulk. Okay. So we have to select the sample and preparing the fibers by hand doubling. That means we have to just pick out the fibers and again we have to place the fibers on the bottom layer and then again we have to do that. That is called as doubling and drawing to give fairly well straightened tuft of about half an inch wide. Say for example, we are taking fibers, we are taking fibers. And then we are just drawing the fibers by hand. Again, we are placing the fibers in the hand. Again, we are, that is, that process is called as doubling process. And again, we are drawing. So likewise, we have to prepare a well straightened tuft about half an inch. And this is laid on a flat black background. And the staple length is measured. That is, the length of fiber is measure and this the shorter fibers will be lie in the body of tuft and the extreme ends will not be will not be the limits used for measurements of staple length and the classer whoever is doing this uh, fiber measurement by using hand stapling method he choose the length where there are reasonably well defined edges reasonably well defined edges and that part he is going to choose the length of the fiber okay so whatever the short fibers if you are preparing tuft in the sense half an inch wide tuft there will be some shorter fibers in the middle and there will be some longer fiber also okay so the shorter fibers will be lie in the body of the tuft and the extreme ends that is in the tips will not be the limits okay will not be the limits used for measurement of staple length okay so and uh, whatever this measurement is there this is 
subjective in nature. That means, say for example, if I am doing this hand stapling method, so I can give my own views and it is no, there is no uh, assurance that if somebody comes and do the same method, he is going to get the same kind of results. Okay, so that is why it is called as subjective in nature. It depends completely upon the individuals. So, differences in results between classes. Here classes are nothing but the one who is doing this measurement part. The one who is doing this measurement part. Okay. So, this is about the hand stapling method. And a single fiber measurement, it takes time. If you look at a to measure the single fiber length, it takes time and the hand staple requires the experience, whatever the hand stapling method is there, it needs lot of experience. Otherwise, if uh, a person uh, without having any experience, if he is doing this hand stapling, where based on his results, where we cannot judge or we cannot judge the quality of the fibers, like length of the fibers and then thereby the machine parameters and other settings. Okay, it needs an experienced person to carry out this uh, hand stapling method to find out the fiber length. So that is why, so, so many methods were developed, so to find out this fiber, so that is to find out the fiber length effectively. Okay. So there are mainly two methods for laboratory analysis used to measure the fiber length. The one is fiber sorter method, fiber sorter method or array methods is much slow but results are more accurate. Even though the process of finding out the fiber length using this fiber sorter method, even though it is slow but, but we can get more accurate results, more accurate results. And the second one is fibrograph, second one is fibrograph, it is a uh, we can say automated method of finding out the fiber length, so within less time but results are not detailed or accurate. But most of the time in industries, in their laboratories they are using this high volume instrument where it is incorporated with this fibrograph used to measure the fiber length related parameters. Understand? So, it is a completely a, uh, automated method of finding out the fiber length. Okay, so, the first one is fiber sorter method. That means, the name itself you can understand fiber sorting. That means, we are sorting the fibers based on their length, based on their length and we are placing it on a velvet pad and then we are finding out the different length related parameters and we will discuss in detail. Okay. So, when it comes to fibrograph, it is, it is, it uses or it is an optical method. It is an optical method of finding out the fiber length. So, we are preparing the fiber strand that is fiber tuft and this is going to be scanned photoelectrically, photoelectrically and thereby we are getting the fiber length related parameters. Okay. So, now we will discuss in detail about what is this fiber sorter method and then this fibrograph to measure the fiber length related parameters. Okay. Now, the first one is fiber sorter methods. Say fiber sorter, I, I, I mean I told you sorting is nothing but we are dividing, we are dividing the fibers based on we are dividing the fibers based on length. We are sorting the fiber in an instrument which enables the samples to be fractionalized into length groups. That is what I am trying to convey. So, we are going to fractionize, fractionalized into that is uh, the sample into its length groups. So, shorter length, sorry, longer length and then followed by that is in a decreasing pattern, longer length followed by uh, shorter lengths. Understand? So, likewise we are going to fractionalize the fiber sample which we have prepared into its different groups. And after finding out this, where we are going, after placing it, 
we are going to get different properties like longer fiber lengths in the tuft, effective length, mean length, upper quartile length, lower quartile, likewise different parameters we are going to measure it. So, we have in fiber sorters, we have beer sorter is there, it is an instrument used to measure. In the same way we have Shirley comb sorter and finally we have sorter, web sorters are the most popular methods of fiber sorting methods. So, under this fiber sorting, by doing fiber sorting and finding out the fiber length related parameters, these three methods are very popular. One is beer sorter, second one is Shirley comb sorter and third one is sorter web sorter methods. Okay. So, these are the three different methods which comes under this uh, fiber sorting process. Okay. So, now, now before going to each and every method before going to each before going to the beer sorter method of finding out the fiber length related parameters okay so whatever it may be the fiber sorter method we are using whatever it may be the fiber sorter method we are following where it mainly consists of four different steps four different steps this is very very important steps you need to understand so the first one is preparation of a fringe or tuft with all fibers aligned at one end with all fibers aligned at one end say for example so this is the end where i am this is thing that this is the fiber and this is the end i am holding the fibers like this so all the fibers should should grip at one end of the one end of the tuft so preparation of fringe or tuft with all fibers aligned at one end. So, that means, so first we have to take the representative sample by doing uh, by a, that is uh, random sampling. Afterwards, we have to prepare the tuft with all fibers aligned at one end. So, this is the first thing and the second one is separation, separation or withdrawal of fibers in order to in order of decreasing length so after after aligning all the fibers at one end one end where we have to take out the fibers and we have to that is we have to withdraw or we have to separate the fibers in its order of decreasing lengths so first longer lengths followed by shorter and followed by still shorter and finally shortest fibers First, we have to prepare the tuft. The preparation of tuft also very important. Suppose, initially if you take the fiber sample from the bale. So, where all the fibers are not parallelly aligned. Okay, now, what we have to do? We have to do, uh, we have to hold the fibers at one end. Hold the fibers at one end likewise. And then we have to do the drawing. Again, we have to place that is doubling. And we have to do drawing. And we have to do doubling. So, likewise multiple times we have to do repeat the process. So, that what will happen where we are getting this fiber alignment, fiber alignment parallelly and we can eliminate even the loose or very short fibers also. And after preparing the fibers, the second one is we have to separate or withdraw the fibers in its decreasing pattern of length. So, after holding all the fibers and then we have to take out the first that is longer length and then we have to place it in a separate element that is in a pad. The third one is preparation of a sorter diagram, preparation of a sorter diagram. This is very, very important preparation of a sorter diagram by laying the fibers on a black velvet pad in decreasing order of lengths. So, what we did initially, we have prepared our fiber tuft parallelly aligned at one end. After preparing, we are withdrawing the fibers in its decreasing order of lengths. After withdrawing, we have to place in a black
So after withdrawing, we have to place in a black velvet pad in the same order, that is decreasing order. So highest length followed by shorter lengths. Okay. So after placing like that, where, say for example, I'll show you. So think that this is this is the black velvet pad, this is the horizontal line and we have to place the fibers like this. So in this order. So you see here we have all the longer fibers which is followed by shorter fibers and finally we have short fibers. So this is how whenever you are withdrawing and you are just placing in a velvet pad. Why velvet pad? Where the fibers will just uh, just adhere to the structure that is the pad so likewise we are going to prepare a sorter diagram so this is what the sorter diagram and this is the horizontal line and uh, all the fibers whenever you are placing we are placing in this uh, velvet pad where we have to maintain the same horizontal line that means where we have to place the one end exactly here, it should not be here like this. Then obviously what will happen here, length variations will come, understand. So the fibers are parallel, that is what it is given. The fibers are parallel and uh, their lower ends align along a horizontal baseline, a horizontal baseline, understand. So now finally we have to analyze the sorter diagram we have to analyze the sorter diagram understand so here whatever it may be the fiber sorter methods where maybe the parameters we are getting from one method to another method is slightly varies but the thing is the preparation of our the sorter diagram is going to follow this four steps so one is we have to select the samples randomly from the entire bale, okay, bale of cotton and then we have to prepare a fiber tuft which is nothing but bunch of fibers. While preparation, think that you have to hold the fibers like this and then you have to draw the fibers and then you have to double doubling, that means again you are placing the drawn fibers on the top of the fibers which you are holding already. Uh, likewise, again you are doing the drawing process. So this process you are going to repeat several times. So finally, you are going to get a parallel strand of fibers which are aligned at one end. Once it is done, once it is done, we have to, we have to, what we have to do? We have to prepare, sorry, we have to withdraw. We have to withdraw or separate the fiber strands in its decreasing order of length. Likewise, say if after holding, we are taking one, one time and you are placing in a black velvet pad. After placing like that, where you have to trace a sorter diagram. You have to prepare a sorter diagram where while placing the fibers in its decreasing order of length, where it sh we should maintain this horizontal line. It should be exactly on the horizontal line that is the placement is going to be exactly towards the horizontal and finally we have to analyze the sorter diagrams we have to analyze the sorter diagram for various parameters of fibers now you can see here now now you can see here so here, this is Indian native cotton, this is Egyptian and then this is American, this is St. Vincent Sea Island. So now you can see, hope you can see this uh, array, fiber array, you see. So this is a sorter, now you see, okay, how it is, how it is. So this is the horizontal line and this is, these are the fibers we are laying like this. Now this is our fiber sorter diagram, 
fiber sorter diagram. So what we have to do? We have to analyze this fiber sorter diagram. Now you can see here this, this one. So this is a fiber sorter. Now you can observe. So after, after preparing the tuff, we are separating or withdrawing the fiber and placing in a velvet pad. So, so each and every time you are withdrawing, you will be getting the shorter lens only than the earlier one. So obviously, you will get a fiber sorter like this, diagram like this. Understand? So likewise, this is for two things. Okay. So now we will discuss about this BR sorter method of fiber lens measurements. So what I am going to do is, so I am going to draw, I am going to demonstrate, demonstrate by using, I am going to demonstrate this uh, fiber sorter method, that is BR sorter method of, uh, of uh, finding out fiber lens measurement by using the BS sorter instrument. So that I am going to demonstrate now. So all of you carefully observe this demonstration where you can understand this clearly. Okay, right from the preparation of tuft and then placing all these things. Okay.